So we're just gonna sync up our cameras. And take one. I still had a mountain of work to do when a towering 6'10 man in a dark coat walk into my law office in Romania. Suddenly, he pulled a gun from his coat, pointed at me, screaming, you have ignored all our warnings. I'm here to kill you. My heart raced as my assassin explained how he would carry out my execution. I grew up in communist Romania during the dictatorship of Nicolae Ceausescu, who transformed Romania into a land of lies and a prison land, where questioning the government could lead to jail, imprisonment for the rest of your life, or even death. That created in me an insecurity and also a passion to fight for truth and justice. So I went to law school. As a lawyer, I found success and had everything I wanted. But inside of me, I was the poorest person in the world, still looking for the truth. Few years into practicing law, a former client came into my office. He always seemed to be joyful in a joyless land. We talked, and that day he invited me to his church. It was dangerous, but I went. The pastor came, opened the Bible, and read John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Then I realized I had been looking for the truth in the wrong place. Jesus is the truth. That day I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior and His divine call on my life to defend Christians persecuted by the Romanian government. Soon, my legal work made me a target of the government, who labeled me a traitor and an enemy of the state. I was often kidnapped, daily interrogated, beaten, tortured, and placed under house arrest. But in all those circumstances, I never felt alone. Even in the interrogation rooms, I felt Christ was with me there. So in His power, I was able to tell my cruel interrogators about His love, saying, I don't like what you're doing, but God loves you, and I choose to love you too. Shocked by my words and my appearance full of blood, they turned their heads away, crying. They did not know what to do with me. Finally, in desperation, the dictator sent an assassin to my office to kill me. As my assassin arrived in my office, pointed his gun at me, I fear for my life, but I heard God's whisper, share the gospel with him. And I started to share the gospel word by word from the Bible. And I watched my assassin melting it under God's power. He put the gun on the table, his shoulder relaxed, he noted several times, and at the end, he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. I should be dead, 
but our unstoppable God had other plans. A few years later, we as a family were exiled to America. After I learned English, I went for the second time to law school, now here in Dallas, Texas, and finally I was able to practice law again and I opened my own law firm. After practicing for years in America, I never expected to be confronted by anything or anyone from my former life in Romania until one day a 6'10 tall man with a tiny Romanian accent walked into my office. I was surprised and soon alarmed. He started to ask questions about my life or my children's life back in Romania. Noticing my panic, the man asked, do you recognize me, Virginia? Showing me his old Romanian Securitate ID. So here in Dallas, Texas, I was face to face with my assassin again. Immediately, I started to pray. And finally, I answered, you have changed a lot. Yes, he responded. I'm older. My hair is almost white. And I don't kill people anymore. He explained that after revolution, he enrolled in the theological seminary in Bucharest, built a church, opened a Christian school and did many, many other things to expand the gospel in the land that was so hostile to it before. He was here in Texas to visit his son, a pastor in this area, and to seek my legal advice as the city had refused to allow his son and his congregation to build a church in that area. My mind flashed back to the terrifying circumstances in Romania when I faced persecution, when my cruel interrogators beat me and pushed me into walls. They had no idea that when they pushed me into walls, they pushed me into the loving arms of God, and they were falling into His arms too. If the truth lives in us, lies cannot overpower us. If our souls are free, no power on earth can enslave us. If God gives us his victories, defeat is impossible. Our God is unstoppable. And church, when we serve him, so are we.